in our workshop. Um, it seems to be a few that are probably lagging behind a small bit. So we'll, you know, as they come in, we'll kind of explain what we're doing <laughs> along the way too. But just to kick things off, just with a, a welcome and introduction and kind of an aims and scope of today's workshop. So today's workshop, what we're trying to do is we're we're showcasing the HP for all pilot activities and lesson learners. That's kind of the, I would say, the number one thing that uh, we want to showcase today is that the work we've done in each of the pilot regions and the lessons we've learned from each of these pilot regions. Now, again, we'll get into that later. That's um, another, <laughs> there's there's a lot to talk about there. So we just, uh, just for our own insight, there's three pilot regions and there's, you know, I suppose there's three separate um, stakeholder groups as well. So we'll just we'll show a case what we've done and the lessons we've learned from each of the pilots as well. We also want to showcase the HP for All replication plan. So as part of the Horizon 2020 project, that is um, HP for All, there is a replication aspect to it. So what the, the whole idea of it is, is we pilot activities and we you know, learn some lessons and <laughs> from from either our good or bad activities, I would say. And from that, we get a, a kind of um, a package together that we can replicate across other EU uh, member states and other regions. And that again is why we are gonna showcase as well the HP for all package. So again, more on that later. Um, we'll just talk about the HP all package after this. And the reason why we've kind of asked you all here today is we want to get feedback from this workshop and we're going to incorporate these into the documents that are going to be showcased today and also going forward in a replication plan how can we learn any more lessons that's kind of what we're looking for today so the approach of today's workshop so it's a hands-on presentation of the HP all package so we're going to run through the HP for all package the replication plan and roadmap and the pilot activities and after that we're going to have a sit down and kind of an open discussion I would say a Q&A session as well and um, from that we're going to hopefully get some more information from you and some um, some feedback as well and then after that we'll have a wrap up and so, and so on and so forth so with that I'll just quickly run through uh, what the HP for All project is in case people don't know of, of the HP for All project so the HP for All project it's a Horizon 2020 funded project. And um, so it's a European funding. And as you can see at the bottom there, the, the grant agreement there is, that's the number there. Um, about the project is, is they enhance, develop and promote heat pump skills that are required for high quality heat pump installations. So it's about skills, skills for heat pumps. And how do we ensure that um, the, the right skills are there for the right people for good installations? The objectives again to design a competency framework so we have all these documents completed and so that's uh, one thing that we can do after this trainer trainer workshop is we can share with you the the hp for all package as as a whole and um there are some i would say some very good documents especially the heat pumps company and skills framework so it's um again we'll get into when we're talking about the hp for all package but it's a it's a 160 page head document talking about the skills required for um uh, for heat pump uh, companies, not just installers, but companies and, you know, as a whole. And the whole another objective was to increase the number of skilled workers, which I can say as today that we've we've hit those targets. So we're all our KPIs have been completed for this project. So it's, it's good to see. I support end user and client demand for high quality solutions. So this is kind of where the pile activities come in and also parts of the, the HP file package, like the benchmarking tool and the uh, knowledge hub as well and then finally last one is replicate the project at national and EU levels so that's what we're we're kind of going to talk about today how do we how do we spread our wings as we could say so as part of the HP for all we wanted to target every single stakeholder that's a surrounding a heat pump you could say so you have the building owner the manufacturer the designer and the installer and of course you've all the different uh um kind of steps in the heat the heat pumps lifetime like specification of procurement for the building owner after sales and operation and maintenance as well from the installer so i won't go into it too much but they're they're kind of the four stakeholders that we've um so we've done the whole value chain there so we want to do we didn't want to just stick with installers or designers the, the, the building owner and the manufacturer they have to get some bit of um i suppose i wouldn't say training for manufacturers but for building owners definitely training but manufacturers is kind of, I suppose, 
uh, bringing back the information to the manufacturers that's what happens. and also creating links between them as well that's that's another big part of the pilot activities that we had so again here's the, the hp fraud package and again we're going to put it a small bit but um the hp fraud package is pilot activities so these are piloted activities that we can show uh that, that work from from the, the local authorities engagement in ireland the large-scale heat pump installations in austria and the public sector housing in spain too so Again, we, we have lessons learned and we can pass those lessons on so that people can, you know, improve their own situation, their own regional situation too. As I said before, the HP for all competency framework, so provides information to across the whole value chain. So building owners, heat pump designers, and installers. And um, it's yeah, we, we'll get into that as well later. And in the HP for all knowledge hub, so this is just um, a resources uh, page. So there's best practice guides, case studies, technical reports. There's also links to the webinars that we've done. So we used uh, a lot of webinars, I would say, for the Irish pilots, mainly due to uh, the, uh, the lack of, you know, trying to get people to travel to places and things like that. Now, I, I do think the, the coin is flipping back to kind of more physical attendances, conferences, that kind of thing. But I suppose for quick, fast round um, information, webinars do work quite well. Um, then the last one is the HP benchmarking tool. So there was supposed to be only one tool for the HP for all project, but we found that because there were so many different stakeholders or just three different stakeholders in the three different pilot regions and also three different languages that we had to have three tools. So we have methodologies to create those tools based on the information from different countries. So again, we can replicate that across other EU countries. And just a quick shout out to the partners of the HP for all. Project. So we've EHBA, the European Heat Pump Association, CTA. Um, I'm delighted to be joined today with Carlos and Rafa from CTA, and thanks very much for setting this up. TUS, that's that, that's also the Irish, um, the Irish pilot, and also the project coordinators. IERC, so based down in Cork in in Ireland as well, and then Rena from Italy. Thanks to Rena as well for joining today. And Energy Sparrow for Band or ESV as they're called. They're um there are Austrian partners who did the. Uh, Austrian pilot and then sustainable innovations or our dissemination and communications officer. So thanks again to everybody and all their hard work. The, the HB for all project is coming to a close soon, but uh, it's been a pleasure working with you all and hopefully we'll get more funding for another <laughs> another project. <laughs> so with that then I'll quickly go on to the HB for all package. So um sorry. So the replication package that we're going to, we're trying to push for today, and this is kind of where the train the trainer comes from. So it's uh, these are the, the resources that we're going to be providing to people that have joined today, and we're going to um, see if, if, if it will help them in their situations too. So the heat pumps competency skills framework, benchmarking tool, knowledge hub, and piloted awareness and training materials. So again, I'm just reiterating what we said before, this is the full package that we're looking to replicate across. So just to quickly go through the uh, heat pump skills and competency framework. So a lot of work went into this document. There was a lot of um, data gathering workshops. There was interviews. There was uh, surveys, all for manufacturers across Europe and all across uh, designer installer and homeowners as well. So there's a good there was a good um, I suppose data gathering exercise that happened with it all. So it's very comprehensive and as I said, it's 160. Uh, pages of good reading, I would say, uh, but we're trying to we'll try to summarize it in the next couple of slides. So, so the kind of one of the main things that, that came out of the HP skills and competency framework is the idea of splitting off pe uh, people in, let's say, the installer designer bracket or the value chain bracket. So, one thing that that was constantly coming up was what was an installer in one country would be an installer in a different country. So. They decided in EHBA, so again, EHBA created this document. They, they decided that installers could be split into two. So you have chief installers and installers. Chief installers being people that are overviewing, let's say, all the installers. They're, they might even, let's say, you could say they could do the design of the the um, of all the installations and the projects. And the installer does the technical and customer focus kind of um, side of things. And then you have the corporate side of things as well, which will be 
their general manager and will look at, let's say, procuring heat pumps for, let's say, future installations and kind of, you know, looking kind of more towards the um, kind of yeah, the more uh, that you could, what you could say is that the company's growth. Chief installers, then all they have to look at is making sure that their installers are doing the right job and make sure the customers are happy. And then the installers then are just the technical on the ground installers and uh, I suppose the after sales um, customer support as well. So, so this is a uh, this was kind of one of the three breakdowns of many breakdowns that are in the document and again color coordinated just to make it easier on the eyes too. So um, again, we can share a document after. It's just kind of give you a brief um, showcase of what the actual skills and competency framework it looks like and what it kind of feels like. So it's this kind of positioning of different people that would throw out the, a company for an install installer company. And in the core competencies then, so this is talking about the competencies of it's a heat pump installer. So you need technical competency, you need a business organizational competency and customer oriented competency. So this is the this is what you call your ideal heat pump installer. You're, they can, it's a, they're client focused, they're influencing, they're adaptable. Um, they had lifelong learning, so they're going back working and in res integration as well. So all these things can be, um, you know, they could be the perfect heat pump installer, and maybe a lot of heat pump installers do have it. But it's an awful lot for one person to be doing, and that's what we keep finding, even from our own pilot activities, is the job description for a heat pump installer, or let's say for a plumber, for example, is getting wider and wider and wider, and there's nearly too much for them to do. So maybe, as again, this isn't set in stone. This isn't you know 100% correct. This, this is why we wanted your feedback here today. Is maybe instead of just having one person as a heat pump installer, you could have a range of people because again, there's so much to do in this entire this little bubble of heat pump installer. So again, there's just again as does this is one of many kind of Venn diagrams that kind of showcase well, where's the heat pump installer, where's the heat pump designer, and where's the the building owner in the sense of these three bubbles, you could say. So again, they, they call them core competency clusters. So another output of the, the HP for all package was the policy recommendation. So again, this is a pretty, pretty in-depth um, document that we created as well, thanks to CTA as well for the, for the document. So it's 11 policy mm -hmm. recommendations that are enabling wide ranging heat pump workforce. So I'll just go through a couple of them now and then we can we can kind of talk through. And again, it was based on best practices and also an interactive dialogue with various stakeholders across a lot of uh, different sectors as well. So maybe we didn't have one put in. OK, <laughs> so I don't think, uh, sorry, there. Well, we, we can send on the document afterwards anyway, but we had um, another policymaker uh, workshop there not so long ago, so it was um, pretty good. So from the top of my head, the main idea is a widespread dissemination is one thing that that's one policy recommendations, and this is at EU level, um, at regional level, and at local level. So get the word out there about heat pumps and get the word out there about um, a good heat pump installer ensures a good in heat pump installation, which again, goes down the line to the heat pump owner and, you know, their house is better for it. So oh, I'll keep moving on. So just to kind of go through because we have a little bit of time to catch up. So another output of the HP for all package is the knowledge hub. So the knowledge hub, again, we, there was only supposed to be one knowledge hub for all three of the, uh, the pilot regions. But instead we said, OK, there's a different language in Spain, Austria and, and Ireland, and also there's different stakeholders that we're targeting as well. So the idea was that we had to split it into three and there is three knowledge hubs available at the moment. And you click on the flag. If you go to hbforall.eu, you can click on the flag and it'll bring you to that specific country's uh, knowledge hub. And the final format we kind of decided on was non-residential, residential workshops and benchmarking tools. So again, we could have got into a retrofit a uh, new build, but instead we said, no, we'll just keep it simple with non-residential residential. Because residential. again, this is for uh, building owners, you could say, or um, end users of heat pumps to kind of get an idea of, okay, how do I use my heat pump? Is there any best case studies? 
what can help me with, let's say, procuring a heat pump or uh, is there any training available for this? So all that's available on, on each of the knowledge hubs. And just again, yeah, just to reiterate, there's three links to the knowledge hubs. So again, if you just type in hbfraud.eu and then you click on either of the flags, you can um, you can access that that knowledge hub. And again, we kind of because each uh, pilot was different. So again, Ireland, we were looking at local authorities and I suppose kind of industry as well. So heat pump installer, heat pump designer, so on. Uh, up Ross, we're looking at large scale heat pumps and well, mid to large scale heat pumps um, for let's say things like industry or so on and so forth. And the Spanish pilot as well was looking at kind of public owned buildings and how does that say, you know, the heating and cooling of heat pumps kind of come into play as well. So there was a lot of differences between each of the regions as well. So we decided, OK, we need to have a holistic approach of what information is is, uh, I wouldn't say usable, but is kind of more prevalent or is needed to be shown to each of the stakeholders in our different pilots regions. So that's again, we have a methodology created for that as well. So we can find we can help people with okay, how do you 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 uh you you know understand your your audience first before you start putting up information. That's kind of the end result you could say. Then we have a benchmarking tool. So again, there was only supposed to be one benchmarking tool, but we ended up making three. <laughs> we tend to do that in the HP Fraud project, do a little bit more. But um, so the whole idea of the benchmarking tool is that it predicts annual energy consumption and cost for heating delivered by a heat pump. So pretty simple. And again, we had to create three of them. So we have three methodologies and um, yeah, three methodologies using the information that's that was publicly available in each of the regions too. So it kind of, um, you know, we didn't we didn't make too much like we didn't go monitoring all the heat pumps, or whatever we, so if whatever information was available, we used, and that's again why we can replicate it across the European, you know, landscape. You could say. So also benchmark is the user's building versus a similar building in the, in that country, and it's the whole idea of it is is it's a decision making tool, and it'll increase users' awareness of how much of a heat pump. How much does it cost to run a heat pump for a year? And it's pretty user friendly as well and easy to use. As I said, there was three tools, so three different approaches, um, three different countries, and three different languages. So again, three seems to be the, the magical number for us in the HP for all space. So now I will pass over to uh, Carlos, who will bring us through the replication plan and the uh, roadmap for that plan. And then after that, then we can kind of dive into the meat of, of today's workshop, which is the, um, the pilot activities and the lessons learned from it. So, Carlos, with that, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Stephen. Yes, yes, I will uh, go further with some uh, reflections uh, related as to how to uh, best uh, uh, implement uh, the uh, different elements of uh, the um, uh, HP for all uh, Package. So let me let me uh, share uh, my screen. Okay, moment. Uh, okay, just one moment. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Can you can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. So I will be I will be sharing it in presentation mode. Okay. Uh, so um, uh, as uh, Stephen has briefly uh, commented, we have four or five uh, elements uh, uh, integrating uh, the so-called HP for all uh, package. Uh, this uh, document, the uh, replication plan, which has been also or will be also uploaded onto. Uh, the HP for all uh, website and we will be also uh, widely uh, disseminated through the uh, social networks and uh, and uh, so forth okay uh, is in is uh, intended to uh, come out as a hands-on uh, document with uh, detailed uh, provisions and uh, guidelines not to uh, optimize the uh, replication pathways of the uh, HP for all uh, package and its uh, related policy policy recommendations no uh, that uh, Stephen has uh, also been uh, briefly uh, mentioning um it is important to note that uh, the next slides I'm, I'm going to uh, display uh, 
relates uh, just to um, suggestions, okay, uh, mainly at uh, national uh, regional level. No, uh, in the in the case of uh, policy re um, recommendations, uh, there is also considered the uh, EU level. But in the end, the uh, implementation of uh, the HP for all package uh, is to be uh, conducted uh, at at these uh, levels, and in some cases even at uh, local level. Okay, so let me let me go through uh, the following uh, uh, slides. Uh, and I will be uh, commenting on the uh, different aspects that have been so far uh, mentioned and uh, in our view, um, which are the best uh, ways to uh, deploy and uh, capitalize on uh, on them. OK, uh, with the regard to uh, the competency framework, uh, it is it is important to start up, um, let's say, but by, uh, by yourself and uh, mutual uh, check uh, and uh, leveling. No, um, once uh, uh, this, as um, as uh, Stephen has just uh, mentioned, uh, the competency framework it is uh, intended uh, for a, a twofold purpose. No, on the on the one hand, uh, facilitate the uh, mutual recognition, but also uh, setting uh, up a, a minimum uh, uh, content uh, of uh, this reference to the uh, skills. Uh, and uh, competences that are needed to uh, uh, boost this uh, uh, profession and these uh, um, profiles of uh, installers and uh, technicians. No, uh, so in this in this case, it is very uh, important to to make a um, a, a, a preliminary uh, check of uh, the capabilities training. Uh, registration and certification and uh, recognition schemes that are in place uh, in uh, the organization uh, or in the country that it is uh, intending to uh, set up this this kind of uh, mutual recognition agreements with the uh, with uh, other entity of or other countries and uh, uh, verify that this uh, minimum context uh, can be achieved or are uh, already uh, in place um, it is it is clear that uh, in order to uh, facilitate this um, uh, mutual recognition, uh, there is a there is a need to at least uh, have in mind uh, the same understanding of what would be uh, needed in the in the end. Um, the second uh, recommendation that we have uh, uh, formulated is uh, try to team up uh, across the whole value chain, both in the uh, let's say uh, in, in the in the two countries or in the uh, two entities. Uh, involved no? uh, uh, during the implementation of HP for all it has uh, become clear that uh, this integrated uh, approach is uh, needed uh, we have been uh, carrying out some uh, events and the workshops with uh, different uh, professional uh, associations and uh, networks and uh, this uh, this question of the lack of integration or at least a coordinated uh, approach uh, throughout the uh, value chain is clearly needed okay uh, so uh, it is also it is not strictly necessary for the uh, uh, mutual recognition process and the identification and the comparison of uh, the current state of play with the uh, with the uh, one uh, suggested by the uh, competence framework, but of course it will uh, be making it uh, far more uh, effective. Uh, the third point is to uh, uh, bear in mind that uh, the uh, mutual recognition agreements and the uh, competence uh, framework are the starting point. Uh, this is not the end of uh, the process. It it uh, it allows uh, to start up a, a dialogue uh, recognition process, as I uh, mentioned in the in the uh, in the first point. Okay, uh, it it will uh, permit a step by step and uh, a team up. A process of uh, uh, improvement and uh, mutual recognition. That's uh, what what it is aim aim uh, for. No, uh, it is also important that uh, this process uh, does not finish just with, let's uh, say, a, 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 a lot of uh, uh, paperwork, uh, but it, be, it is also uh, putting putting uh, practice. No, uh, at least with uh, some uh, small pilots of uh, how this uh, mutual recognition and this. Um, uh, competence uh, framework uh, is is uh, uh, really uh, working or or uh, or not. Um, 
Uh, along the same uh, way, it is also uh, important to, uh, set, to set up some test bed no, of these uh, proposed uh, competency uh, levels uh, in order to uh, check them uh, before uh, launching the uh, process. Uh, in uh, conclusion, uh, it is not an immediate uh, process, but um, I think it's it's a it's a good way to have a short to medium term uh, prospect and uh, go uh, uh, back to back with other related uh, entities that will be having the same needs and the same uh, targets. Okay. Um, in what respects the uh, knowledge hub, uh, it is also uh, and, and in this sense is just yeah uh, common 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 sense. No, fix uh, right from the start the purpose on and the uh, challenge to be to be uh, addressed no uh, it can be either just uh, filling the filling the gap of uh, existing uh, information sources uh, uh, it, it can be also more uh, ambitious and uh, uh, i met uh, uh, integrating and create uh, synergies uh, between uh, different uh, information sources and try to pack them and uh, give them more uh, added value and of course the, it is also important to have let's say some kind of uh, indicators of the impact uh, we uh, uh, intend to uh, achieve in the sense of uh, how much audience, uh, which uh, uh, profiles, uh, with uh, which um, uh, implementation uh, aspects to be uh, uh, addressed and uh, 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 quantified. Um, of course, of course, uh, the uh, knowledge hub uh, must reflect what the uh, uh, regional or uh, national uh, context is in the in the sense that some aspect of lang of uh, language uh, intended uh, audience or uh, uh, the uh, context to to be uh, incorporated uh, depending on the uh, market maturity uh, are uh, important no so in this sense even if the let's say background uh, concept is uh, quite clear uh, this uh, formal uh, adaptation is uh, important. Okay, so same same goals, but uh, different uh, uh, layouts and the content uh, depending on uh, the regional or uh, the national uh, level. Um, it is also important that uh, the knowledge hub uh, uh, does not be just a mere uh, inventory of, of, of what is uh, published or uh, available uh, on the uh, social networks or uh, in paper or uh, so forth. No, uh, It is also important to focus on uh, case studies, good practices and the existing tools no? uh, for the uh, different levels no? of uh, audience, no? uh, starting from uh, the end users up to uh, installers and uh, and uh, so forth and keeping keep in mind uh, the uh, philosophy of uh, facilitate uh, learn by by uh, uh, doing no so uh, having in this in this sense a uh, user oriented added uh, uh, value uh, uh, approaches no for uh, filling in the contents of this uh, knowledge hub uh, a fourth uh, important point is to uh, uh, ensure the uh, involvement of uh, relevant stakeholders that may contribute to the uh, feeding of this uh, knowledge hub uh, and try to uh, strengthen the uh, collaboration uh, uh, links uh, with them. Uh, in the end, uh, it will be more than uh, desirable uh, having a platform uh, federation and a uh, uh, upgrade and uh, let's say uh, who knows uh, it would be just uh, the starting point of uh, a more uh, elaborated uh, b2b platform or a b2g platform uh, which can uh, provide in the in the long run either uh, service uh, orientation or uh, service uh, provision um, regarding to uh, heat pumps uh, installation uh, maintenance uh, uh, travel shooting uh, uh, etc uh, it is also uh, important as in every uh, knowledge knowledge hub that there is a continuous uh, up, uh, uh, update uh, improvement and uh, dissemination and communication effort uh, in this in this sense uh, the uh, commitment to uh, uh, keep uh, up updated uh, the uh, contents and try to uh, aim at a continuous uh, uh, improvement of the of the uh, platform is uh, important no 
and uh, as I have just uh, mentioned, uh, having in mind also a, a co-creative uh, uh, approach, giving 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 floor to third parties to contribute and to uh, enrich the uh, knowledge hub. Uh, with regard to the uh, benchmarking tool, uh, again, uh, it is important to uh, define the purpose. It, it will be just uh, uh, increasing or uh, raising more uh, awareness uh, at the uh, uh, end user end, okay, or uh, even uh, helping out in the uh, decision uh, support process, uh, either from uh, customers or from uh, designers or uh, from installers. And why not uh, uh, also addressing the do-it-yourself uh, uh, approaches? Um, of course, the, uh, benchmark, the uh, benchmarking tool uh, should not be uh, intended to replicate what uh, already uh, exists, but uh, instead uh, trying to uh, identify and, and fill gaps and uh, should that they, they be uh, try to uh, improve the existing tools if uh, necessary. Um, a clear bottleneck we have gone gone through, and it's uh, important also to bear in mind, is that uh, it is important to know uh, from the very beginning which is the kind of background information we uh, uh, that that uh, there is available, and the and its uh, granularity uh, in the in the sense that uh, if we are aiming at uh, developing a, a um, more sophisticated. Uh, tool, we would be running the risk of uh, encountering some uh, shortages of uh, background information that may hamper this, this uh, deployment. This has uh, happened, uh, in fact, in some uh, cases, and it has forced us to uh, downsize uh, the uh, scope no, of this, um, of this uh, uh, tool and try to uh, adapt uh, at the uh, existing uh, sources of information or uh, to uh, formulate and more tentative uh, approaches to uh, allow for this uh, gap filling. Um, so in this in this sense, it is also to uh, in, uh, it is also uh, important to uh, define and check uh, reasonable uh, assumptions and uh, adjustment uh, of these of these tools uh, if needed uh, with experts. We we also we also did in our in our uh, case, uh, of course. The uh, provision of this background information, and, and this is a message, uh, especially for, for public uh, administration, but also in some in some in some sense uh, to uh, uh, associations of uh, manufacturers or uh, installers, it is uh, needed to delve into the uh, obtention and the utilization of this of this kind of of, of uh, basic information, which is in the end needed to feed these uh, tools. Uh, regardless of them being or not more or less uh, advanced, even uh, basic ones, no? But uh, of course, uh, even the simplest uh, tool uh, will, will be needing this, this, this uh, uh, kind of uh, um, background information. So uh, be aware that these uh, shortages may happen, and should it be the case, uh, you will have to work with some uh, adjustments or uh, adjustments that, that uh, have to be reasonable. Uh, with the regard to the uh, usage uh, patterns and the uh, usability of uh, of these uh, tools, uh, it is important to uh, keep it simple uh, principle, uh, but also being uh, realistic in the in the sense that, of course, simplicity is uh, important, but uh, some some kind of let's say reliability uh, must be uh, addressed. No, and uh, uh, it is also important that. Um, this uh, uh, feasibility try to try to be also as uh, trustworthy as uh, as uh, possible. Uh, it is it is more uh, important to clearly state right from the from the start that the uh, that the uh, 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 the, the uh, benchmarking tool wouldn't be as um, uh, ambitious as uh, initially uh, provided, but that the uh, expected outcome uh, is is to be as uh, reliable as uh, possible. So, in, in this sense, the uh, conclusion that uh, would be that the uh, benchmarking tool would be gap filling uh, oriented. And also, uh, uh, it, uh, it should bear in mind the feasibility aspects, and of course, it's, uh, it has to be as simple as possible, but uh, without putting in danger the effectiveness and efficacy of of uh, of it. Um, with the regard to the awareness raising uh, materials, uh, which have been also produced uh, in the context of the project implementation, 
of course, uh, uh, these uh, materials have to be uh, tailored to the uh, different uh, audiences that have to be uh, addressed uh, with the jargon, with the uh, uh, language, uh, trying to uh, respond to uh, the expressed concerns or needs from this audience. It can be uh, in the users or the citizens or uh, installers. It is very uh, important. Um, of course, this uh, material um, should be concise, not uh, 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 experience shows that a very, very dense uh, contents tend to be neglected in the in the end. So uh, conciseness uh, is uh, important and of course also uh, coherency uh, between all this uh, material and uh, accessibility, of course, through the uh, website or through some other um, uh, channels. A, a, a very good recommendation is that, as possible, this uh, material should be uh, interactive. Uh, for instance, a customized set of questions and answers or infographics, or even, uh, why not, role, uh, role uh, plays. Uh, uh, from uh, uh, what we can uh, gather, uh, it has been a, a clear example of best practice that uh, uh, should be replicated. Now, this, this kind of uh, materials which uh, allow uh, um, uh, end users or uh, customers uh, to, uh, to have a more proactive uh, uh, involvement no? in this uh, uh, awareness uh, raising or uh, a capacity building uh, uh, process. Uh, it, has, it has also been uh, suggested to uh, include contents from uh, complementary areas, uh, for instance, the uh, deep retrofit. No? Uh, why? Uh, be because uh, normally uh, the end user which is facing this, this kind of questions, this kind of needs, this kind of uh, uh, problems, uh, it is uh, so is, is so uh, uh, doing in the uh, contents or a, or a more uh, complex situation, which uh, may uh, clearly uh, include some other uh, side uh, aspects. No, and in this sense, giving also uh, linkages to very related issues, but that not not uh, properly uh, HP related would be also uh, convenient. And of course, uh, these uh, awareness raising materials uh, have to be uh, updated, have to be uh, uh, um, uh, completed, have to be uh, increased in the in the course of uh, the time. OK, uh, and in this sense, uh, as in the as in the case of the competency framework, uh, uh, there must be some kind of uh, responsiveness in, in the in the sense that changes in the uh, market or uh, legal uh, changes that, of course, uh, produce a, 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 an additional number no, of uh, uh, documents which are uh, related no, to these to these uh, changes shouldn't be uh, more or less uh, uh, or one way or another uh, incorporated no, into the uh, the uh, package of this uh, awareness raising uh, material. So the conclusion would be that clarity is uh, a must. Also, agility uh, in the sense that these uh, organizing materials must be uh, rapidly or swiftly uh, uh, adapted to changing contexts and try to be as comprehensive as possible without being too over ambitious. But uh, uh, of course, addressing the uh, uh, key aspects that must be uh, pertinent in uh, uh, at uh, every moment. Okay, and so that's all from uh, my side, uh, Stephen. Uh, I'll I'll give you back uh, the turn so that you can go on with the uh, with the uh, presentation. Okay. Thank you, Carlos. And uh, if for anybody that's in the audience today that um, has any questions, you can put it into the chat and we can get to them later if you want, or uh, or you can hold on off till the, the Q and A session as well. So I'll just oh, I'm not sharing the wrong screen. Here we go. You see my screen now? Yes, Stephen. Yes, yes. We can, we can see it. <clears throat> so um, we're going to just talk to the, the pilot activities, kind of the background of each of the pilots, kind of work that was done in each of the pilots, and then kind of the, the lessons learned and the key takeaways from each pilot too. So we hope that um, you can provide some feedback as well to see if, uh, you know, if there's anything you can add to, to what, we're, what we've already kind of learn from ourselves or if we're you know if we're completely wrong you can tell us too that it's a it's all about um feedback today i would say so so to start off uh we'll start off with the spanish pilot so spanish pilot 
uh, was undertaken by CTA in Andalusia. So Andalusia is a, in the southern part of Spain, Malaga, Seville, that's what, um, in around that area. So the, the Spanish pilot targeted sectors were uh, heat pump manufacturers, installers and public sector. So again, heat pump manufacturers being a big one because there was a lot of uh, engagement with manufacturers in the Spanish pilot. And the, the main uh, goals were to untap the potential of the public sector <clears throat> as a driving de demand force. So again, public is similar enough to the Irish pilot where um, local authorities were kind of targeted as well, because again, there's a potential there for them through the use of their, I suppose, the legislation coming from the government or from uh, their administration or their procurement and tendering for um, for housing or for installations. Another thing was to increase the heat pump manufacturer's competitiveness. So again, there was, um, there was a good link there between them, the heat pump manufacturers in um, and also for the CTA and the Andalusian government as well. So again, a two-pronged approach, to, you're coming at it from the demand side and the supply side. So uh, Spanish and Games, so there's, there's five events that were used to engage with the public and also for, um, we'll get to the, the manufacturers later. So the, the five events were the IVIS 2021 event, so it's Congress on Social Housing Innovation and Sustainability. Um, the second one then was the needs and opportunities of sustainable building stock. So again, there was, well, I won't go through each of them, but uh, there's there's each of the, the conferences that were happening and the joint CTA AFAR meeting, so that's the uh, and the scene heat pump manufacturers association and also with with that manufacturers association there was three bilateral meetings that we'll get to in some moment there was a sort of more more conferences here that were that were held in spain so the one there is the heat pump forum which specifically focuses on education training and skills opportunities and needs for heat pumps in um in spain so it, it, that was a very big event to be at and uh, delighted that cta got to go and you know Push for push for the HP for all to be be seen on the big stage as well. So there was three yearly bilateral meetings. So there was nine nine in total with Afar, which as we spoke before was the Heat Pump Manufacturers Association, Athene, which is the Heat Pump Designers and Technicians Association, and Fadia, which is the Andalusian Heat Pump Installers Association. So again, three um, very important groups that were engaged with throughout the entirety of the HP Fall project and. Again, some very good insights came from them as well. So the kind of what we're, what, what people are here for. So that was what we that was what was done in the Spanish pilot. So what were the lessons learned from this? So the pilot um, facilitated a more integrated approach. So again, the dialogue across the whole value chain. So from designers, manufacturers, installers, all the way to the public sector and public procurers as well. So. Uh, another thing was all of them are more, now more committed to reinforce and give visibility and coordination on its training. So again, I would say the first the first part of the the project or first half of the project was kind of getting trust from these uh, manufacturers and you know trying to get like gain access to their um, and not even just uh, just manufacturers but designers and even training providers as well in Andalusia. It's just kind of getting their you know. Their trust and saying that we're not here to scam you, we're just here to help you and help and see if we can coordinate anything with you. So again, from that, uh, again, hard work that was put in for the first half and towards even the towards second half as well was the opening up of um, of doors for uh, the HP Fraud project. So again, fair play for that. And again, it does take a long time to kind of get that trust. So I think it was, it was either around 15, 16 months. So, you know, that's just, to keep that in mind as well as that it takes time to kind of build up this this trust and this um you know to get to gain this visibility and to help with this coordination as well. Uh, administrations are now more aware of heat pump energy savings, so that's one lesson or uh, market takeaway you could say. So the administrations in public buildings and public uh, offices are now more aware of heat pumps and the energy saving potential of them as well, and are starting to include it in specific installation provisions. So again, using that power of the, the public procurement and the public tendering to push for better skills for heat pumps and, and for heat pumps as well. Also, there's <clears throat> a non-residential energy rehabilitation um, or building investment. So again, green public procurement is one big one there. So that's kind of one thing. And another thing to say is that subsidies 
I've, I've also started to include heat pumps now in um, in Andalusia. So again, to, to the kind of the three main takeaways you could say are there. <clears throat> Number one, you have to, I wouldn't say attack, you have to um, collaborate and engage with the entire um, heat pump design, or not sorry, heat pump, the heat pump value chain. So across the entire value chain, you have to um, collaborate and engage with those people. Secondly, to gain the trust of those people as well. And it will take time and it might take, let's say, giving up some of your own materials or so on and so forth just to get in the door as such and get gain that visibility and help the coordination. And then thirdly then, after all that is said and done, you can sit down at the table and talk with public sector officials or manufacturers and kind of get through the, the main uh, nuts and bolts of what's the issues and how do you get around those issues too. So we'll move on then to the Irish pilot. So Irish pilot was kind of similar to the Spanish pilot as we focus on public sector as well. So we focus on local authorities and uh, local authorities are um, pretty much in the focus like now because they have their own targets for um, for 2030. So again, they've been put under the, the sword, you could say almost, that they have to have these set number of houses that are installed in Ireland for 2030. So again, these new houses, they have to have heat pumps in it or they don't have to have heat pumps, but it's just common practice to put in a heat pump in order to, to gain that energy requirement. So, and then the secondary focus we had was on large scale heat pumps. So again, that's the kind of similar to the Austrian, um, the Austrian partners and their um, large scale heat pump kind of stakeholders that they were focusing on too. So we kind of use, we were, Kind of the Irish pilot was somewhat in the middle of the two pilots. So you have public sector on one side and large mid-scale um, installations on the other side. So we were kind of smack bang in the middle trying to do both. And I suppose we were more successful with the local authority side. But again, we, we're, as I said, it's all about gaining trust and making sure that, um, you know, people trust you and you can gain visibility then for, uh, for your own research or so on and so forth. So just a bit of a background on the Irish kind of pilot side, pilot side or the sector or you know member state that is there. So there is a couple of things that were pushing heat pumps in Ireland, and I suppose there's kind of a good overview of which ones are kind of you know as we call them the the carrot sticks and tambourines. <laughs> so there's uh, one of the incentives is the Irish government have invested eight billion in the national retrofit program. So again, this is just for retrofits now, this isn't, this isn't for new builds, but there is a huge push for retrofits in Ireland. And again, you, there's energy requirements for um, retrofits and new builds. So, and usually the most common practice is for heat pumps to be installed there. But other, other technologies can be used, but it is pretty much, um, it's easier just to use a heat pump, I would say. Uh, another big policy push is housing for all policy. So it's a new housing plan for Ireland. So, and this is kind of where we focus on local authorities as we thought we can get more bang for our buck or bang for our time if we keep trying to gain the trust of the public sector. And again, because we're a third level education provider, the public sector kind of has a bit of, they're like, okay, you're a public sector as well. The, the trust was already kind of set up. So it was easier to kind of gain access to uh, local authorities through that as well. So that's another important point to kind of bring up. But um. A significant part of that housing for all plan is 90,000 social houses by 2030. This is on top of the already over 100,000 social houses uh, currently being uh, overseen by <coughs> the local authorities in Ireland. Another important document is the guidance document L or part, part L, which uh, is the conservation of fuel and energy and it sets a minimum energy requirement for new builds and retrofits. This is again why heat pumps are being so heavily pushed in Ireland because they're, to reach these energy performance requirements, it's kind of just commonplace that use a heat pump, it's easier, that kind of way. <clears throat> uh, then the SR50-4 standard, so that this standard came out and it gives guidelines for design, installation, and commissioning of heat pump systems up to 70 kilowatts. For, and again, for new and existing dwellings, so for a new build or for retrofits. So that's the kind of background that's set up us for our local authority engagement. So again, what we did was our first step of engagement with local authorities was 
training of their internal staff or their their housing department who would be on the ground with the heat pumps, uh, with their heat pumps and with their with their customer or their tenants as well. So they kind of had to have an understanding. And um, so what we did was we firstly went to their offices, um, provided a training session for them for a couple of hours, uh, brought along a practical element too, just to kind of, you know, get a, a look and feel of a heat pump as well. The second step then was a re- awareness raising events throughout the local authority staff and the general public that they had, um, you know, invited in as well. So it was kind of just, again, a nice buzz um, event that kind of show- showcased that, OK, look, the the, uh, the county councils and local authorities are looking at heat pumps and their, it's on their agenda and sustainability is on their agenda too. So it's kind of, a, it helped us a lot as well. So we've got more um, interaction then with more, local authorities through that as well. And then the third step in was the engagement with their, their contractors. So this would be their designers and their installers and their, you know, I suppose their their main list of contractors that they use. And uh, again, because we were coming through the avenue of, of the public sector, contractors were a lot more open to talk to us and they kind of they found that um I suppose that they had more trust in us because again they were kind of thinking on their own heads, I would say now can't I wouldn't say quote me on this, but they they said, okay, there might be more work involved. So we might get talking to these guys. So it was, and also uh, one thing that we would say about the training of contractors as well is that the contractor said that they needed something quick and easy that wasn't too time consuming. Like it wasn't a 12 week course or a 16 week course, something small, digestible. And again, there is issues with that, but um, we started looking into micro credentials and micro learning as well. That was kind of our, our look as well, as especially from a third level education as well. We want to see what the best way to um to help with these with these kind of uh, these issues. Because again, these contractors are very, very, very busy because as I said, those targets for those targets for Ireland are pretty much um set in stone and uh, there's a huge push now for for new houses and also due to, uh, that's due to the housing crisis as well, I would say. Another thing we did was as as we said for that micro learnings we did a lot of industry engagement so we engaged a lot of consulting engineers heat pump suppliers and non-domestic designers and we t- just to pinpoint the needs of the sector and kind of put up together a uh, what we call the comfort and energy and construction webinar series so we got a a good list of people there that we, we um talk through and talk through situations like Insulation best practices, uh, ventilation best practices, so on and so forth, and all that's available online. If you if you go to the TUS um, RDI, I think it is Research Development and Innovation uh, YouTube page, it, they're all up there. So there was just kind of a good range of things that we we spoke about, and that we we kind of we conducted this because again, talking to contractors, call, talking to designers and installers, time is an issue. There's two, everyone's very busy, so we needed something that was quick and easy to kind of uh, people can come in and out of. So again, information's information, uh, whether you pay for it or not. That's that's kind of what I see it. Um, then now, now there's still further engagement planned for after the lifetime of the project. So again, we're always looking for more speakers and more people to talk. Um, whether it be whatever you have to say, and we, we we kind of we have a process where we kind of look through. Uh, request uh, to speak on webinars and um, again because we are a third level institution that people do trust us for uh, for information so we have to be uh, do our due diligence for these webinars too so um so anybody is always welcome but again we, we do have a process there just just, just to show you. so the lessons learned on the market transformation in ireland so the public sector needs to lead the charge is number one so they can demand skills like for uh, tendering procurement. So when it comes to an installer or commissioning of a heat pump, you can put that down in the, to, into your tendering document saying your installer has to have X, Y, and Z courses done or has to have something equivalent. It's it's kind of similar to uh, the SEAI, uh, which is the Sustainable Energy Authority of Ireland. They have a grant system and for to get their grant funding for... Um, for a heat pump installation, you have to have completed uh, three courses or similar courses to it. So that again, that's kind of showcasing that okay, they, this this is coming from a public sector, a public side, that these 
this list of skills that are required for a good heat pump installation. So public sector needs to lead the charge in that so they can say for any heat pump that's been put in from for all the different local authorities, they need X, Y, and Z person to commission it. So it's just kind of that's that's one thing that we found. Um another thing is market segmentation and market cannibalism. So we found that from talking to a lot of contractors and a lot of installers and designers that there seems to be a kind of almost worry that work will end or they're, they're you know, I'm going to take, let's say, for example, all of the heat pump installations in Limerick, Cork and Clare. Now, that's fine, but there are targets up until 2030 and until 2050 as well. So this heat pump wave isn't going to stop anytime soon and there's enough to go around. And it's hard to say I come from a third level institution, public sector, but there is enough work that, that that has to go around. And again, what we need to start doing is we need to remove the people that aren't as good at it or instead of removing them, uh, reskill them or up, uh, uh, train them so that they can be better at their job so that they can go on and install better installations. Because that's, that's, at the end of the day, that's what needs to happen is installations have to be uh, a, a higher caliber, a higher quality as well. So. But just on market segmentation, market cannibalism, there seems to be a lot of that with um, suppliers and installers kind of fighting one another in order to, you know, get an advantage or get more money into their into their company. But this isn't going this isn't going away till twenty thirty. So there's a long time there to kind of get things, get your ducks in a row, make sure you have the best installers, best designers, and then you could then because from that then you can push and say, okay, I am I have the best designers and installers in the country, you should choose me. Customer handover is essential as well as another thing we found from engaging with uh, end users and also from, I suppose, installers and designers too. It's It seems to be that the main stay is you go into a house, you get a you get your key, uh, they, told, they tell you not to touch the heat pump and good luck, that's it. That's not how it should be. There's, there should be a customer handover, like a walkthrough with the customer on how to control the system. And also even like, for example, some small video to say, this is, if this happens, hit this, like almost like a, you know, if whenever you get your car, you get a manual with your car, same same thing should apply for a heat pump. Because again, it is going to cost them money in the long run. And, you know, if the more they know, the less kind of problems there will be down the line. Uh, manufacturers need to step up and ensure competency installers. So again, this kind of goes back to warranty of heat pumps too. Um, if the installer isn't competent and just installs heat pump in any old way and a couple of months later there's something wrong, the compressor breaks, where does it go to? It goes to warranty. War warranty is probably manufacturer's problem then. So you can, and there, it might drag on for a couple of a weeks, so you have issues then with the end user then they, they have this bad reputation for heat pumps. So again, manufacturers need to ensure that doesn't happen by ensuring the competency of installers, whether it be through training, courses, or so on and so forth. Um, that's just, yeah, this one. There's a need for a distinction between heat pump designer and heat pump installer. So again, because there's so many heat pumps that have to go in, and we see from a lot of, well, from engaging with a lot of manufacturers that there's a lot of hand-holding involved between the manufacturer and the installer where the manufacturer does the design and the installer does the installing. Well, that's okay for now, but when it ramps up to like two, twofold the amount of heat pumps that are going in, you'll have that one designer in the, in the manufacturer, maybe there's two or three designers in the manufacturer. They're going to bur crash and burn out and you're going to lose that person then. So there has to be a distinction between a heat pump designer and installer in contractors and in companies. One thing that we're... We were talking with manufacturers about, and they're very, they seem either somewhere against, somewhere with it, but uh, a regulation of the trade might be an idea as well. So similarly to the electrical and gas sectors, because again, it's becoming so prevalent that if there isn't a, it's a competent installer, then there's, there can be issues down the line. And again, you know, it's, it could, it could cause, you know, very bad publicity for heat pumps. So maybe a regulation of the trade is needed. But again, we've been told from manufacturers that maybe just um, a core set of skills are required for a heat pump installer. And if they don't meet that requirement, then they're not allowed to install. But that's the exact same as the regulation. It's a 
Um, third level engagement with, with local authorities is essential. I, this again, not just because we're a third level um, institution and we're engaged with local authorities, but um, I suppose research from local authorities going towards local author or sorry, third level or research from third level institutions um, can be provided to local authorities and for manufacturers as well to kind of improve their services and um, improve their knowledge base as well. So that's the Irish pilot. I'm just going to quickly run through the Upper Austrian pilot. So our Upper Austrian partners at Energy, Energy Spar Verband or ESV, they're, they're in uh, Lynn in Upper Austria. So a bit of background and the objective and scope of the pilot as well. So it's interesting that Upper Austria, just 60% of space heating already comes from renewables. Now again, renewables, it doesn't just mean heat pumps. There's a lot of uh, biomass uh, burners and uh, biomass is a pretty big part of their energy uh, usage in Upper Austria. So that's kind of one thing to note. Uh, the market for small residential applications is is very mature, I would say, uh, in new builds as well. Similar enough to here, there's it's kind of it's similar to Ireland, I would say, that there's, um, you know, policy there that kind of pushes people towards renewables rather than installing heat pumps or no, sorry, installing um, fossil fuel heating systems. Several funding programs for residential, non-residential sectors. So again, it's also linked to strict efficiency criteria. So like the Partel as well, um, it's kind of, it's pushing for energy efficiency over anything else. Upper Austria is a very industrial region as well, with it being 25% of Austria's industrial exports. So again, a lot of um, large scale industry with a lot of heat requirements, a lot of cooling requirements, so on and so forth. So you kind of get where, why the Upper Austrian pilot focus so much on mid to large scale systems. There was low level market penetration of non-residential heat pumps, so uh, especially in process heating. So again, that's something we were looking at as well in the Irish pilot, that process heating, you know, it could be used, heat pumps could be used. And again, through the great work by our Upper Austrian partners, we, we have a lot of case studies as well on that. So. Again, now they are in German, so there, there, there might be a need there to kind of uh, translate as well for our own and knowledge hub, for example. So uh, the objectives of the pilot region was to provide options for phasing out fossil fuels in companies. So again, pushing heat pumps. And um, they wanted to increase awareness of the promising applications through, again, case studies, so on and so forth, and increase the training and needs of uh, increased training for installers or and also what they call technology laggards which was um, people who need training on e-pumps um, and this is all due to the energy crisis and all installers now need to work with heat pumps so similar situation with I would say with both countries with, uh, with Ireland and Spain is that installers will be working with heat pumps from now till 2030 so should they be trained in fossil fuel heating as well? That's kind of what we should be thinking about as well. The apprentice program maybe needs to be overlooked, but um, that's another, <laughs> that's another uh, story for another day. So key activities that were undertaken. So there was a, a strong uh, increase in the training offerings for their, um, their I suppose they're, they're an energy agency based in Austria. So they're, they've, again, they have this kind of built up trust already with with building owners, with companies, and um, with installers and designers, so they had, they increased their their training offering as well and included heat pumps in their training offering. They had ten uh, plus training events and um, that targeted actors along the whole value chain. So again, just some KPIs and, in, and interesting things. And one thing that was very interesting was the information brochures that they created and the 14 case studies that they had of companies and residential buildings that use heat pumps. So again, that's available on the um, the uh, the Knowledge Hub for Upper Austria. Again, it's in German, so there might be a way to translate it in Google. But um, we're, we're also looking at maybe trans translating it over as well. So there was also a renewable process heat guide. So again, they created this comprehensive heat pump information guide that had case studies on renewable heat and process and the guidance as well on it as well. So again, very good information. They also have the tool for um, benchmarking as well. So the lessons learned 
So policy packages work synergistically. So this is again where we get the carrot sticks, tambourine, skateboard. So if you think of the carrots as incentives, so these are, you know, your your grants, and um, so it's incentivizing people to you know, go install a heat pump. Sticks, so that's your policy. So ensuring that, let's say, the policy of Partel, for example, in Ireland, where there's an energy requirement, so that's your stick. That's your policy. That's forcing to change tambourines. Then, so that's your um your energy awareness. Your your um your awareness campaigns. That's that's what the kind of tambourines you're making noise about. It. You're making sure that everybody understands. And then skateboards in is kind of a new addition where uh, they, it's the technology is so well um, matured and it's kind of to make it easier to kind of transfer over. So the information is there. It's just to use their technology as well to kind of force people to not force people, but kind of push people towards heat pumps or renewable energy. So market segmentation, know your markets, this is a, another big thing. So it's a kind of a catch all for all of the, the pilot activities is there's different groups and each of the group needs a different instrument or a, a different tool to kind of uh, encourage them to use renewable energy. So residential sector, so you analyze by the structure, the ownership and income levels. So again, taken into, into consideration, um, you know, is it tenant housing? Is it um, public housing, private housing, so on and so forth? Is there retrofits involved? So, so yeah. So this is kind of, and also the income levels is a good one too, because again, you can kind of, well, I wouldn't say you're basic, but like an education level is another thing as well. So what what we always say is you always go for, let's say, if a seven-year-old can understand it, then everybody can understand it. So that's kind of what you have to kind of do when you're looking at, for example, training materials for for residential sector and, and housing owners too. So again, keep it simple so that they can effectively take in and use it later. So companies again analyzed by size and sector. So companies are a big part of the the um obviously the market. So again, just to understand who's the biggest, who's the smallest, what kind of niche markets are there, so on and so forth. Uh, quantification. So how much of, of each type is kind of there as well is critical. And then which consumer group are most likely to be activated with with let's say your with your carrots or your sticks or your tambourines. And start with easier groups. So this again, the quicker impact and gets the market moving. So with uh, trust, who who is your trusted groups and who trusts others kind of more easily? That's who you, you target first. And from that, you'll create enough hype that you can use for, for let's say, other groups. Offer technology portfolio. So again, it's not just about heat pumps. It's about energy efficiency across the whole. So... It can be anything from bioenergy boilers to district heating to CHP. So it, it doesn't have to be a one, um, you know, one shoe fits all. It's it's about offering the, the option or the choice between each of these energy efficiency uh, opportunities or these renewable technologies. Financial incentive is a big thing too as well. So make sure it's attractive and stable. So I think that's kind of, um, you know, pretty much straightforward. Uh, energy advice, so free, product independent, reliable information to guide investment decisions. So that's a very critical point. And again, that's where that trust comes from too. So if, you, if you're not product specific or you're not, if people figure, feel that they're trying to sell them something, they won't listen to you and they won't come back to you. If you say you're free of any <laughs> bias, so on and so forth, and provide reliable information through, like we said before, to our activities like our events, our conferences, our webinars, our workshops, that this reliable information then can help guide investment towards other things. And supporting market structure, so training across the whole value chain again. So again, training from your end user to your installer to your designer, and also kind of, I wouldn't say training for the manufacturer, but networking for the manufacturer as well to kind of Increase their their outreach and also their uh, their ties with with all the other market um, stakeholders. So with that, I think that is all from me. I think yeah. So we're going to have a quick Q and A session now. So I don't know, Carlos, yes, if you uh, anything Stephen, to put up. Yes, Thank you, thank you so much for your for your uh, long and uh, interesting uh, intervention. Okay, I will I will uh, let you take a rest. Okay, uh, now now uh, before giving the the floor to uh, the attendees, uh, uh, I would like to pose you a question or 
even post to myself, no? Uh, it is it is clear that the project that now is coming to an end has produced quite a lot of uh, materials. Uh, uh, the, we have been going through the uh, different components of the uh, HP for all uh, package. Let's say uh, the uh, knowledge hub, the competency framework, the benchmarking tool, the uh, awareness raising materials, a pilot projects uh, 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 dossier, uh, and uh, and uh, so forth. No, uh, and also the policy recommendations. Um, uh, but now that the project is uh, just finalizing, uh, if I were if I were an entity uh, interesting uh, in uh, not only in accessing these uh, materials, uh, but also uh, try to get let's say some some feedback or some basic uh, uh, orientation, maybe some uh, qualifications, uh, just to be answer some uh, questions I may I may I may have. Uh, will, will it be possible in the near future to approach us uh, uh, in some in some in some way? To get uh, further uh, feedback uh, from the outcome of uh, the project, maybe through uh, the website or through uh, our email or uh, through social networks. What is what is uh, your opinion, uh, Stephen? Um, I think that the kind of push for, I suppose, the awareness through social media as well and through let's say as i said i keep saying the trusted kind of bodies that are there that, that can push the information but i think the package itself like as as a whole probably should be undertaken not through probably one company or one body but multiple like for example the heat pump association would be a good a good start for let's say a replication plan or um some or let's say uh, yeah people that can take on this this responsibility because you'll have multiple avenues and you'll have trusted bodies and from different areas and again as you spoke about the last uh, in the last slide there it was that um trusted information and and uh, i suppose independent of one product or another so that, that that i think that kind of melds well for kind of the replication package that a heat pump association would be a good start for let's say bringing together all the information and doing the market research like we did and then kind of pushing the, the awareness campaign throughout the whole region or member state. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Stephen. OK, uh, now I would I would like to give the floor to uh, uh, any uh, attendee uh, wishing to uh, to pose uh, his or her uh, questions. Uh, please, uh, uh, would you be uh, interested? Yes, um, Sean, Sean, Sean Kelly, please. Yeah. Yeah, hi, Curtis. Hi, Stephen. Uh, thanks very much for that. Um, yeah, I, I suppose I, I, I know Stephen um, from attending various events and um, I suppose uh, here at Unitherm we supply a number of heat pump uh, brands and we have seen issues with the installation over the last 10 to 15 years. Um, we have started a, a course, basically a, a 20 credit course with in conjunction with another university in Ireland, um, ATU, um, to help um, bring the installation up to a, a, a better better level. Um, but unfortunately, in Ireland, I suppose the SEI um, only recommends a kind of a, a manufacturing course, a kind of short manufacturing course, to get onto the register. And the, the, I feel those courses really aren't adequate. At this stage, and we need to bring in a new kind of a, a skill level. And I think Stephen, you were talking about there uh, people regulating um, this sector, like you know, like we have RGII and we have the the, the regulation there for el electrics. Um, I really think this is something we need to push for, um, and to kind of help create an, a, a heat pump technician or a heat pump engineer, and. I wonder what what are your thoughts on that, and how how do we kind of push that forward? Uh, thanks, Shane. That's that's very interesting. Yeah. Um. Again, we we've we've talked through um the European uh, so yeah through the European Heat Pump Association to all the heat pump associations throughout Europe. So that, right, again, there was there was representatives from Ireland as well there. But um, 
there, there's kind of there seems to be a bit of a pushback against the, the whole idea of regulation because they think they're going to you're going to push people out of the market. So we we were talking as well with the European Heat Pump Association and again through the competency framework that um, maybe there's a, a need for let's say differing an installer to as you said an engineer or technician. So you have the technician who does the design and commissioning, and you have the installer who just you know, does the wet work and does the installation of the, the heat pump as well. Um, again, it's because of the, I would say, the issues with regulating the trade is that, you know, who who do you, like, how do you start the apprenticeship for a heat pump ins installation or installer? You start with a plumbing apprenticeship. Do you just instead just change the plumbing apprenticeship to kind of cater more for renewable technologies or, you know, that's kind of, what I would say, there, there's multiple ways to kind of attack it, I would say, but I think regulation to try and get it even in a regulatory body would be tough enough. But um, I'd say yeah, to, to start, I would say is uh, a reform of the apprenticeship for plumbing in Ireland. I think that would be one way to kind of, you know, stop people using fossil fuels firstly, but also because they won't have the, the technology or the knowledge to do it. But so there'd be more better press for the next 20 the next 20 years of heat pump installations that the apprenticeship changes to heat pump only or renewable energy only i suppose we're looking at the uk that we're in the uk as well and over there they have what's called a skills card and basically you tr you do your training and you get your skills card and you have to keep up your training to maintain your skills card so we're toying with the idea of implementing that ourselves um Without, without regulation, but just to have this skills card as um, to, sh to show contractors, to show builders, show developers, show homeowners that you have a certain level of qualification. Because at the, at the moment, there's zero there. You can mm -hmm. have any Tom, Dick and Harry really uh, showing up and they're, they're the same as a guy that's been installing quality systems for 15 years. So I don't know, that's yeah. something we're, we're toying with ourselves and just, you know, a bit of support with that would be great or uh, maybe suggestions on how we could get it out there. Yeah, that's interesting because I know for, let's say, <clears throat> SIBSI or Engineers Ireland, you have to do a certain amount of CPD or um, a certain amount of um, workshop training or conference attendance just to keep your membership, you could say, or improve your membership. So that's kind of, that'd be a good way to do it too. So yeah, there, I suppose, the only way you can kind of start it is if, if you get, I would say, is you need to get the Heat Pump Association of Ireland, you know, on your side and pushing for it too. Because again, once you have, because the industry itself, so the man, all the sellers, suppliers, manufacturers in Ireland need to kind of get, get behind it. Because if one, if an installer goes, oh, I can't install Uniturn because I have to get this skills card, or sure I won't do that, then I'll just do this. Because they'll just, they're just looking for the path of least resistance, most of them. But, I do agree that something like that would kind of work. And again, it's kind of the first step towards regulation, you could say, because then your skills card could be, you know, your competencies on the skill card could be kind of regulated by, by a certain body as well. So it's, um yeah, it's an interesting story. I don't, and I wonder, does anybody else have any um, input on that? The idea of like um, a regulated or a skills, um, skills card, as, he, as Shane called it. Sorry, my understanding is if you want to do SCAI grant work, you have to have a level six qualification. Yeah, so as part of the SEI grant funding, you have to have a level six fee tech. So they, they specify plumbing, electrical and refrigeration. So that's kind of the three that they are equivalent, they say. So our equivalent is one of them. Then the, there's there's three main steps. So you've that, you've the second one then is that they, they mentioned a heat pump installation course. And that installation course is actually no longer being run. It used to be run by Dundalk IT back in whenever the, the procurement guidance document was created. So I think it was 2009, I think it was. So that, that course is no longer there, but it says our equivalent at the bottom. So that can be um, any heat pump course that's level six or above. So um, uh, the Uniterm course would, would would constitute that, or the Dundalk IT course would also constitute that as well. Then the third kind of 
tick mark that you need to get is you need to do manufacturer training as well. So that manufacturer training could be anything. It could be 20 minutes, it can be a day. It just, that's what it has to be. So there is there, but that's only for retrofits that are receiving the the um, the grant funding. So you're, you're talking about new builds as well. There's no regulation there. It's just anybody, as Shane Kelly said, anybody can throw, can throw in a heat pump and that's that. Carlos, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I would like just to have a short uh, intervention. No, I, I think it's, it's very uh, pertinent the um, uh, mention uh, to the skills cards no, that have been done. Uh, some EU projects that are closely related no, to uh, uh, HP for all, uh, for instance, in the in the contents of the uh, build up skills initiative, no, uh, precisely uh, address this uh, this issue. No. Um, uh, uh, Maybe this is this is something to be further elaborated, no? In the in the context of the competency framework, because uh, trying to forging it uh, out into a, a, a skills cards scheme would uh, definitely uh, work and it would um, facilitate making it uh, making it uh, more visible to uh, the interested parties. Yes, I think it's a it's a it's a very good suggestion, no? Uh, we, we should try try to uh, uh, elaborate a, a little bit more, and of course, uh, we should also uh, transmit and uh, interact with the uh, EC in this uh, respect. Yes, thanks. Also, Patrick, no, wants wants to uh, intervene. Thanks, Carlos. Um, hi, everyone. Um, Corey O'Reilly here. I'm a colleague of Stevens in in Tours. Um I just uh, Shane, if I could ask, um, if I could ask you a question. Um, in in the normal course of of events, like are, I presume Uniterm are taking this kind of a, that that you when you have heat pumps to install, you train your installers yourself. And and am I right in saying that your promotion of a training course is to tr to help to stimulate greater a greater pool of resources, let's say, it, within the industry? Is that is that the because you know you're obviously selling heat pumps, so you you're you must be dealing with. I'd be curious. I'd be interested to know how are you dealing with the current workflow, um, in terms of training installers. That's fine. Uh, yeah, well, I suppose. Yeah, we like we were doing basic. I suppose manufacturer training for the last ten or so years, um, and like it. I suppose what we felt it wasn't enough. Um, the the. the the guys, I suppose, lot most of them have level sixes. They've done their plumbing apprenticeship, so they have a fair idea of of how to plumb the unit. Um, but what we were seeing is okay, when it comes to the troubleshooting stages, that they were just too it was too easy just to pick up the phone yeah. and get the likes of ourselves to to uh, to troubleshoot the unit. Um, yeah. And I think the problem was that yeah. you know the heat pump is just an alarm system. It shows alarms for everything in the in the the actual system so when the red light was on the heat pump a lot of the installers just tend to think that okay the heat pump there's something wrong with it um when there's a like there's a list of troubleshooting uh yes. things that, that can be done to look at the whole system rather than just the heat pump so um what we're kind of working with atu on is trying to get a full and concise um kind of heat pump uh installation commissioning and maintenance course um mm -hmm. so that they can be a heat pump technician basically they're able to take somebody's design install the heat pump set up the 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 parameters um, and then you know give a good handover to the homeowner and a year's time when the homeowner is looking for service they're able to come out and service the unit or if there's a breakdown in between they're able to troubleshoot that unit themselves to a certain level until yeah. they may need to to call us or the manufacturer um because i suppose the more heat pumps are out there we we uniterm we try to kind of serve maintain all our units but there's just too many there no. at the moment and we can't keep adding staff to do this yes. so it's we really need to um pull up the the skill level for the uh, plumbers and electricians out there and unfortunately i think the current apprenticeships aren't uh, adequate for heat pump installation they're they're adequate for for all other types of plumbing but for heat pump stations not there because 
the guys need to have a bit of plumbing, electrical, and kind of nearly getting into software now at this stage. Um, so, and, and Sh- Shane, yeah. like yeah. I, I fully agree with you, um, mm. and you know, work, you know, my, personally, my own perspective would be exactly like that: that the the installer has the relationship with the homeowner, and you know that ne- they need to be able to do a lot of the like. If if an alarm goes off and it's because there's air in the system, there's no yeah. point in calling you, you know. So no. no. Um, so the the question that I have then is, what level of commitment do you think is out there amongst the people that might end up doing that work to take that to take on board that responsibility? You know that that they because to me it's it's a commitment here. It's a yeah. you know a, a training course. We we've seen training courses come and go, and and people go to them, and then they're. They're they're driven maybe by by subsidy schemes or whatever, and then all of a sudden the people we've we've had Stephen you've you've mentioned um, a few of them and I know you've been in in discussions with a lot of them and the the demand for the training courses is not as kind of steady as you might think it would be you know mm-hmm. so to, like it comes back I think as well to commitment and in that that case then are we back to the kind of carrot and stick thing that at the end of the day if we don't have a a regulated profession type situation here whereas someone can't actually you know even if it's without a grant if it's in a new build situation as we have in Ireland where there's no there's no real it's back on yourselves it's back on the the distributors on the warranty that's that's Mm. that's where it falls back for new builds so yeah yeah, I see, well, I see what, what seems to be driving to us, uh, Park, is the maintenance side of it. A lot of the inquiries are those that are looking at making a, a career out of maintaining these units. They, you know, they may have installed a few and they're starting to see now that these these uh, units need um, main, maintenance and there, there isn't enough uh, qualified people out there to do it. So th- a lot of them are coming in at that, that's, that side of it. So... The, by doing the course, they're able to learn from start to finish the, the whole process of heat pump installation and commission and maintenance. Um, and it, it 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 seems to be bringing them up. Well, hopefully it will bring them up um, um, a, a, a level or two. Yeah. Um, and um, and, and by the, they, they, they should, by, by what you're saying there, that there, there would appear to be a commitment on their behalf. So to do that the, and to take it on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I suppose the course we were supposed to start there in February, but unfortunately, when the lecturers fell fell ill, uh, long term illness, so um, we're putting it back now to September. But the demand is very high, and it was it was on that service side that that seemed to be um, the, the 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 greatest demand. We did a few surveys on it, and it just everyone wants to get in and on the maintenance service side so um like i think everyone is focused on getting heat pumps into houses and okay that's day one but they're going to be there for years so yeah, yeah. unless we have enough people to maintain them it's no there's no point putting them in yeah in the first place yeah yeah and, and i mean and it's after six months after they go in or and 12 months after they go in that the homeowner needs to be reassured that these energy bills are actually correct or or maybe that they're not correct you know that yeah and they, needs they, to this year was huge, actually, with the, you know the the, the electricity tripling. So yes. the Jan- January bill this year, our phone lines nearly melted, um, yeah. and it's just, you know, they 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 weren't sure because they they, they I suppose the heat pump had been commissioned. The maybe there wasn't enough time to talk to the homeowner. Like a lot of the time, the homeowners don't make themselves available anyway because they're so yes. busy, um, and they don't want to take time off work to be there. But uh, yeah, the, the, a lot there was a lot of. Um, insecurity I suppose about the, the the charges and the the consumption of the unit this this Christmas because we had long periods of you know sub uh, zero temperature and uh, the electricity price increase yes. so yeah it, it's if, if they were able to call their local installer down the road to put in the unit it would have been fantastic but we're not at that level yet and that's where we need to be yeah okay thanks Shane yeah. Uh, I just saw uh, Vladimir. Did you have your hand up, or is that a yes? Just oh. short question. I support yep. your activities in this field. It's a very interesting topic. I would uh, like to ask you: Do you have confirmed training program for certification of heat pump installers in Ireland or Spain? Are you implemented it? Uh, do you implement it in practice? Uh, so yeah, there there are a couple of courses in in Ireland anyway that. Um, 
you get a certification first of all. Usually it's level six, so that'd be, I can't remember what the European level is, but it's, it's called the National Frameworks Level Six. Or, um, it's through further education usually. And um, the so most of the courses are only a 12-week course. Uh, I think, I'm pretty sure, Shane, and your, your course is a two-semester course, so that's a 20-credit course. That's I think that's through higher education too, so a lot better than what's out there at the moment, I would say, in terms of um, progression. But um, yeah, so it's, it's a level six just above um, your apprenticeship. So after your, you get your trade, you get your level six, and you can go on in for level seven if you if you continue with it. So I don't know, is there similar in Spain? Yes, no, no. I, in this in this sense, I I, I regret to say, you know, that uh, the situation is, is not so 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 good as uh, in Ireland. Okay, in this sense, the uh, public sector in Spain uh, is lagging behind. Okay, uh, uh, although there are some uh, level level six uh, acknowledgements, you know, for for certain profiles, then they are not so uh, heat pump uh, specific. Okay, they deal with uh, let's say. Um, a renewable energy system um, management or uh, alike, okay? And uh, um, the industry is far more uh, responsive because in the end they, they need this, this kind of uh, propels and the industry is trying to make up for the lack of uh, an updated uh, public uh, framework uh, um, uh, featuring this more uh, specific uh, requirement, no. Uh, so there is an urgent need in this in this sense, uh, and, it, uh, and it has been so transmitted by industry in, a, in a, the uh, different workshops we have been holding with them that uh, 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 they will they will have to set up one way or another, uh, let's say a non a non formal um, a competence framework to allow for this uh, lack of uh, specialized uh, profiles uh, defined by the uh, public sector. No, so okay, uh, 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 I, I, I know in uh, um, uh, in the in the in the last uh, Spanish heat pan forum, this was uh, uh, widely debated. No, that uh, some uh, reaction from the public sector uh, uh, there must be okay. Uh, maybe not in the short term because they, they will not be able, okay. But uh, uh, in the medium term, uh, they will have to do to do so. And uh, in between, uh, this gap uh, uh, will be will be will be filled by non-formal uh, uh, schemes uh, addressed by the uh, industry. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm guessing Vladimir is is it is the similar situation in Croatia? Is it that there's um, there's no direct heat pump course that's available for Croatian plumbers or installers? Yes, it's 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 an open question for our society because um, on the, on the sites we have um, some of of uh, of systems who are out of operation and. Uh, uh, we are missing the, the, the skilled person in, in the heat pump is in the field and it's problem. Mm -hmm. I, for for example, for F gas regulation, our technicians uh, have to be uh, uh, trained. It ob it's obligated, but in in this field, uh, we are not not precise uh, in, in introduction instructions. Mm -hmm. yeah, it seems to be it seems to be the similar way with a lot of countries as well. Um, that the, the installer itself, the, the heat pump technician or the heat pump designer, there's no real regulation around. Um, doesn't seem to be much regulation being pushed for competency of these people, but for other people, it's you know, like for example, F gas, because again, it's the potential for danger they're kind of looking at rather than the potential for energy savings. So that's kind of one thing that we even found in our in our pilot activities that danger is a lot higher on the, the list of problems than actual energy efficiency, so. Yeah. Okay, uh, Stephen, uh, it seems that we come to the very end of uh, the workshop. I don't know whether uh, anybody else would like to, to take uh, the floor for just uh, the last time, or maybe we can, we can, we can close, okay? Uh, of course, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for uh, attending and for uh, this vivid uh, 
debate we have also had, no? Uh, I, some some important points have been uh, made, no? With uh, regard to the importance of, let's say, having some more tangible uh, uh, assets to be to be to be uh, uh, used in the uh, recognition process of uh, these needed. Uh, professionals like the uh, skills cards. Uh, we have also uh, stressed the uh, importance of uh, installers, uh, especially in the handover uh, process and the, uh, let's say, the after sale service also. No, uh, The uh, importance of not being disconnected for, from the uh, service providers. No, And uh, uh, last but not, but not least, also the uh, importance of uh, uh, having uh, some training schemes uh, in place, uh, widely accessible and visible to uh, everybody. I think this is the uh, the uh, gist of, of of this of these uh, workshops. Uh, once once again, I I thank uh, uh, everybody for the uh, attendance and interest. Uh, uh, you of course can can also reach us through the uh, website three uh, w or uh, through our LinkedIn account. Uh, and, and we will do our best to forward your comments and uh, suggestions to the European Union. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, uh, Stephen, for for your uh, dense <laughs> intervention because you have you have all uh, the most of these of this uh, presentation. But I think you have uh, got to the uh, uh, straight to the uh, point, and you have uh, uh, highlighted the most uh, important issues. And okay, uh, uh, let's uh, keep in touch. And of course, we will be open to any other. Uh, question you may post to us in the uh, near future. Thank you. Thank you to uh, everybody. Thanks. Okay. Right. Thank you, Carlos. Thanks, everybody, Thanks, for joining everyone. today. Thanks. 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 Very good. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks very much. Talk to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.